If you want to help fund more episodes of the Honest series, go to patreon.com slash geekswelcome or join our YouTube memberships here on the channel. You can also join our Discord where we discuss future episodes of the show. Hello everyone, I'm Fiora the Tank Girl, a streamer, which as we all know, is not a real job. I'm here to tell you what all streaming entails and why it seems like we're constantly angry or depressed or having an existential crisis or a total meltdown. You see, streaming should be a dream job in theory and in practice is a total nightmare. This job will have you running for the casting couch of Hub. Not Hollywood. You can't make it in Hollywood. You're not pretty enough. You see, 1% of streamers make this job look incredibly easy. That's a very real statistic that totally wasn't attempted to be covered up and lobbied by Twitch and YouTube to not have Congress find out. On top of that, you seem to always see streamers are either suddenly exploding in massive amounts of popularity, or they're having a total crisis meltdown, or it turns out they were racist or a sexual predator. Why are there so many of those? Holy shit! But I'm here to talk about the 99% of us who barely make a living above minimum wage. Like all other performance-based industries, streamers have to work their asses off for at least 99% of us to avoid that incoming student loan whiplash that's coming for us all right now. And also, just like SAG after striking right now for better conditions, yes, I know the writers got what they wanted, and I'm very happy for them. However, Netflix, throw the actors a bone. Just like them in that way, in that we have to work our asses off. But unlike them, we don't have any protection. Streaming became very difficult for everyone after the pandemic ended. You see, before the lockdowns went into effect, it was a good idea to have some sort of online presence. But now, going to a job interview and not having an online presence is a death sentence. People like me have streamed for years without getting any traction or just having to fight algorithms that are geared against them. And it could just all be bad luck. But now, with the end of the pandemic, you're not only competing against people who've been streaming for a decade or more, but any Yahoo with a camera and a microphone who has some spare time. And yet somehow, they still have 10 times your viewership. But it's not their fault that this is the only bastion remaining for anyone who's found themselves without work, especially since the pandemic ended. Do you might not want to hear this part, and I would never discourage any of you from doing this job, but some of you really shouldn't attempt streaming. You see, streaming requires a lot of multitasking. Not only are you the performer, you have to be your own tech support. If something goes wrong, tech-wise, you may be down for the day, the week, the month, or the whole year. I have no idea why I started clapping like that. If OBS updates, you might find that all of your settings are gone, or worse, haven't been backed up in months. Furthermore, you may also find a total crapshoot if your hardware still works with OBS or not. Want think that fancy microphone still works? Guess what? It's out of date because its driver hasn't been updated since 2010. Imagine, if you will, a theater performer having to go up and adjust their lighting before they go to be or not to be. Do you honestly believe your audience will stick around while you do that? Absolutely not. They're, they're not staying. There are other streamers they can go to. But you'll make up for it. Like working holidays. You think you get holidays off? No. Labor Day? Not for you. Christmas? Christmas special. You think you even get Boxing Day? Absolutely not. And New Year's? You're going to start streaming about the time that the first New Year's hits in somewhere in Asia and continue streaming until it gets around to California. You might even have to go until it hits Hawaii because you might find you're doing exceptionally well that day and you really want to take advantage of it. You see, working holidays is very important because it's when your viewership goes up by about 50% and your income potential is massive, though it's still not enough to pay rent. But right after all of that holiday crash and crazy, 
you're gonna go back to your normal streaming schedule. No breaks for you, can't have that. It's almost like you have it, well, pretty bad. Though not as bad as Amazon workers. Fuck Amazon. Oh, and breaks? Oh no, you don't get any. Absolutely not. You can't afford to go to the bathroom or get a meal, because if you do, you might lose viewership for that couple of minutes you're standing up. Further, streamers get no vacation time, no medical leave, no paid days off whatsoever. Amazon owns Twitch, by the way. Wait, I stream on Twitch. Am I literally working for Amazon? Can I get one of those Amazon cry boxes installed in my house? But the money's good, right? Nah. Nah, just nah. If you want to be monetized, you have to do a ton of free work for months or even years before you'll see one red cent from ad revenue. Also, ad revenue. Guess what? It's a joke. In July, I streamed for 164 hours and 49 minutes. That's not counting setup and teardown time. We'll get to that later. But you want to know how much money I made from ads on Twitch with over 100,000 views on my stream? With the average person watching my stream for more than two hours and having to sit through six ads because they were there for two hours? $5.49. Hey Ian, how much did you make off of YouTube for your first year of ad revenue? About 14 bucks. And how long did that take to get? A year and a half. Why did you come back to YouTube? I feel like I'm being called out for no good reason. 97% of my revenue comes from tips. That is total strangers on the internet who decide I'm a good enough entertainer to drop some money on. It's worse than being a busker, because if that green bar at the top of the screen doesn't fill up, I'm having ramen for dinner. And if you get a copyright strike, well, not a single penny of that ad revenue, that sweet, sweet ad revenue, goes to you. Not one red cent. Even if you get a million views. You want to know what makes it even worse? If you get a copyright strike on YouTube, for instance, you can't stream for 90 days. Imagine your boss telling you that they're retaining you, but you're not going to have any work or pay for 90 days. Now you can try and get in contact with website support. You can try, but you will not be successful. You see, just to get YouTube or Twitch to acknowledge your existence requires a massive outcry on social media and people badgering them for up to a week. And at most, you're probably gonna get a we're looking into it, which is corporate speak for we don't give a crap. If RT Gaming can't get tech support at all, and Markiplier took a week to get his channel back after it was hacked, do you honestly think they're going to notice your little streaming butt? So to keep themselves afloat, most streamers take second jobs, which then leaves less time for streaming which means they have to work the second job more, which leads to, oh wait, you're intelligent. You see where this is going. I write books. If you wanna be successful, you have to promote yourself everywhere, which means venturing out of your primary social media platform. You know, the one that actually pays you money. And this forces you to use every social media website ever made. Yes, this does mean you'll have to use websites you absolutely hate, like Facebook and Twitter. Websites you kind of tolerate, like TikTok, and websites that mm, exist. And the funny thing about social media websites is they hate it when you share outside links or share content, but they love you if you share content through their in-house video viewer. Now, you won't get monetized by those outside websites without jumping through an absurd number of hoops. Like, for instance, TikTok requiring 10 million views before you get a penny. But you will want to promote yourself, and that means promoting yourself everywhere. Which means all that extra work you're doing for absolutely no pay, just so you might get a couple of extra people to come watch you stream. Why? But let's talk about content. What will you be streaming? Probably video games, because you're not pretty or handsome enough to carry a show entirely based on your personality. Ian, that wasn't aimed at you. I know, but it still feels like it was kinda aimed at me. Now, you wanna stream a variety of content? Great. You wanna stream one particular game and in particular? 
yeah, that's great too. Don't do both because you will totally lose viewership if you try to mix it up. Next, you won't be allowed to play video games on your own anymore. Do you want to know why? Because no one wants to watch you grind through 10 levels of Pokemon to get to the next gym. You're going to have to do all that off stream. Pokemon Platinum, 170 hours. <laughs> why? Finally, you'll never be able to enjoy video games on your own ever again. Do you want to know why? Because any time that you're playing video games on your own, your brain is going to tell you you should be streaming this. You should save your game and turn it off and stream this. Yay, capitalism! But hey, it beats fast food, right? It does beat fast food, right? Oh, and by the way, games are expensive. And if you're a variety streamer like I am, you'll be buying anywhere from 5 to 30 video games a month. But that's not all you'll need. You'll need a ton of equipment. I'll need to get my equipment list to help you out here. Let's see. Starting with the following, you will need a streaming PC, which is much more powerful, expensive, and specialized than a gaming PC. Next, you'll need video games. We already went over that. You'll also need a video camera, even if you're a VTuber or a voice-only streamer, you will still need a camera, I assure you. Further, you'll need a high-quality microphone, like this really expensive Yeti on the table that has made me record this four times. And let's not forget the noise-canceling headphones, the food, the clothes, the makeup, even for boys, the rent, and, uh, oh, and you might get health care and a 401k. Slash those last two. Write them off for the rest of your life, because that's where we are. So all of that has to be gained, and it costs thousands of dollars for your first month of streaming. And make sure your stuff is legit, and that you're not sailing the Red Sea with the black flag there, matey! Actually, that's a terrible metaphor. Just don't, pirate. Seriously, if Twitch finds out, you're in so much trouble. Oh, and those random EULA agreements, you know, the end user license agreements that you see pop up with games now. Guess what? You're reading all of them front to back, and you must begin to understand the language of legalese. Lest something unfortunate happen, such as a video game company now claiming ownership and copyright to your likeness unless you mail them a written letter to opt out. I'm looking at you, Armored Core 6, by From Software, published by Bandai Namco. That letter cost me $55 to send across the ocean, and I didn't even get a response. Add it to the expense list for your taxes! And after all that is said and done, if you could somehow make this nonsense work for you, congratulations, but you still have to keep up your health. No one wants to come watch an out of shape, fat or ugly person stream. And I am so sorry. That was meant targeted at me, not you. I know, but it still kind of feels like it was aimed at me. And that's what it's like to be a streamer. Somehow, it's less awful than DoorDash. But only just. Streamers, come watch us follow in self-pity, doubt, depression, and absolute existential anguish. And hopefully you'll give us $10 a month. Okay, if you want to go see the YouTuber side of things, uh, Ian has done that video. It's over on my channel. Hi, everyone. I'm a YouTuber. Did you know we have no idea what we're doing? At least with streamers, you have the facade of interacting with another human being. Also, I have no idea why a seven second video of me fighting Floor Masters in Tears of the Kingdom got more views than any of the 10 minute professionally produced videos I've done on my channel. Professionally produced videos? Why do I keep writing self-deprecating humor? And I'm live right now, so if you still have time, I would ask that you please come over to Twitch and, you know, let me know, hey, thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 listen, 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 I'm going to give you a present at the end. I promise it is worth staying to the very last second, don't you click off. But please do like and subscribe, that actually helps. It 
it's stupid. I know it actually helps. Um, let Ian know if I should be back on the channel with camera, microphone, and all those shenanigans, or if you guys would prefer me just to be in the background. Uh, further, and this is important, um, if you don't have anything at all to say, see over on my channel we do this thing where we type dot 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 for the algorithm. It actually helps. It actually makes it where more people see the video for every single comment because you reacted and dot 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 for the algorithm is exactly enough characters to trick the YouTube algorithm into thinking that we have posted an actual comment. So if you've got nothing else to say, say that. And now for your present at the end. You can all now say you've been in my bedroom because that's where this is being recorded. Good night!